Good afternoon. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad you joined us again tonight. Well, you are looking at the star of our show. Um, this is a pork loin. And um, Fred is a shopper extraordinaire. He gets looks for really good buys in the grocery store, and then I figure out what to do with them. So he got a really good buy on this. And, and let me talk about that just a second. In case you don't know, Fred and I are both retired. We are what you call on a fixed income. And um, when I first retired and started going to the doctor uh, under the new plan for retired people, every time I went to the doctor, they asked me, are you getting sufficient food? Um, do you get so many servings of fruits and vegetables a day? Do you have access to me? And it kind of irritated me to start with because, you know, Fred and I have pretty good sized garden. We put up a lot of food. We did before I retired. And uh, as I started to get irritated, I started doing a little research. And I, I already knew this, but it sort of came into focus for me. Um, lots of seniors don't have enough food. People on Social Security and um, uh, people on retirement. And so it dawned on me that uh, it was a good thing that they were asking because there are resources, uh, but but it also dawned on me uh, that there are lots of tips and tricks uh, about living, buying good food on a budget. And uh, just this week, one of the admins in our uh, Cooking from Scratch on Debbie's Back Porch group, Ellen Serwick, uh, posted a really good post about how to stretch your dollars in the grocery store. And I'm not indicating that you know, if you're having trouble buying enough food, it's because there's some lack in you. It's just, because uh, food's expensive, it's just some tips and tricks on stretching your dollar. And, and it was a great article, so uh, actually it was a great post that she made. Um, so if you want to join a group and you want some of those hints, then please join us, and the link will be in the information at the bottom of this video. Uh, so that's a long way to say when you're shopping, uh, meat may not be the most expensive thing you buy. And even though folks talk about meat being really expensive, and, and, it, and it is, um, but meat in the U.S. is cheaper than it is most anywhere else. And um, meat is less expensive if you think of it in a different way. For instance, Fred went shopping and found, I'm sorry, that's my dogs. I'm talking about me, you know. Uh, hush. Fred went shopping this week and he found a Boston butt for less than a dollar a pound. He found it in the manager's special. It was 14 pounds. He paid $12 for it. He brought it home. We cut it up. That'll be 14 pounds. It'll be five, six meals. So, uh, that was what, 85 cents a pound, and that's cheaper than vegetables. So if you watch it and you're lucky, you can get those. And um, when I look at this, I see multiple meals. So tonight I'm going to make stuffed pork chops. So tonight I'm going to make stuffed pork chops. And I look at this loin and I see uh, two stuffed pork chops. I see several pieces of... Uh, breakfast chops, which would be thinner and, and smaller, that I'm going to cut from this end. And the middle section is going to be a small loin roast. And when you're buying pork, um, a lot of people don't know this, pork loin and tenderloin are not the same thing. Uh, this is from the side of the meat, side of the, the beef. This used to be connected to bones. Uh, my grandmother used to say, you can have pork chops or you can have ribs, you can't have both. Uh, so if the ribs have been cut off, uh, this is what's left. And a tenderloin is a, a small, usually about a pound each, uh, a very, very tender, probably the best piece on a pig that runs right along the spine. And it, it gets cooked differently than this. So this is a pork loin, not a tenderloin. If you get a tenderloin, it's going to cost quite a bit more, uh, and uh, it's going to be so yummy. You would make something like 
pork medallions from a tenderloin, or you might even roast it whole, but you would cook it differently. So, I want my stuffed pork chops to be about an inch thick. I'm, and I'm going to thin them down. They're not going to be that thick when I cook them, but they're going to be that thick when I cut them. So, I'm not real good at this, but I think that's about an inch. And Fred just sharpened my knife. And it'll have to be sharpened again because, yes, this is a glass cutting board. So that's two chops. There's two people, and these are huge chops. Um, we may even actually eat twice off of each one, but... Then I'm going to slice some very thin slices, and I'm going to fry these for breakfast with a biscuit. And this will be, not tenderloin, but loin that we have for breakfast. And they'll fry quickly because I'm slicing them so small. In this middle section, I'm going to leave for a night when we have guests. Uh, this will serve four people. It's plenty big enough to serve four people. Uh, and if by some chance we don't have an opportunity to use it for guests, I'll roast this uh, with a dry rub, some oil, and a rub. Uh, roast it at 350 on an open rack uh, and, and have it as a roast. And then if there is some left, it will be uh, pozzoli, some kind of a soup or even uh, pork and gravy. Uh, the other thing that I have learned is that if you do a roast like that uh, and, and you want to come back later and slice slices off uh, of an already cooked roast, it makes really great loin for a biscuit in the morning. So we've got one, maybe two, three, four, five, maybe six, meals off of that one loin. That's a week um, of, of meals for the two of us. Uh, and of course, if you've got a bigger family, you're going to think through how to cut it differently. But for us, this is a very special meal. This is a very special meal. And this is two breakfast. So be thinking about that when you buy your groceries. You just buy what's on sale and figure out how to go with it instead of making a menu and then going and buying your groceries. And, and you'll cut maybe half off your grocery bill if you do it that way. So I'll be back and I'm going to show you stuffed pork chops. Okay, here are our two pork chops. Um, and I, we're going to stuff these. So, and then we're going to we're going to cut them and marinate them, and then I'm going to stuff them afterwards. So, when I cut these, these are about an inch thick, maybe just a tad more than an inch. And you don't cut it on the fat side, or I don't cut it on the fat side. Um, I cut it here, about in the middle. And I'm going to try to keep a fairly small hole, but cut out the inside so that I can put lots of stuff inside. And you cut and cut an opening big enough stuff in, but you can see there's lots of room in there to stuff. Okay, so let's do the other one. Right about in the middle and cut, and you have to have a sharp knife for this, you just, you, you really do. You'll hurt yourself if you don't have a sharp knife. And I used to watch somebody called the Galloping Gourmet. I'm going to date myself. He used to be on TV, 
every day when I was young and had little kids and I was home during the day. And he always said, you'll hurt yourself with a dull knife before you will a sharp one. So I've got plenty of room in here for stuffing. But it's not cut so big that the stuffing will fall out as I cook. So we're going to marinate this. And before I put it in, in the salt, it's about a tablespoon full of salt water. Uh, and I've got maybe a quart in there, a quart of water. And I'm going to squeeze a little lime juice on this before I put it in the salt water. Uh, and that does a couple of things. It imparts flavor. Uh, but the acid also is, is going to help tenderize the meat. And you could just use lemon juice if you wanted to, but I found a pretty lime yesterday and I'm going to use it. Okay, I'm going to be really careful here because this is a glass cutting board and I really don't want to break it. But we're going to flatten. I have to yell. Flatten these out just a little bit. They're real thick. And I wanted them thick to cut them. I mean to stuff them. Uh, to get the right cut in there. But I don't want them quite that thick to cook. Because I'm stuffing these and I want everything to cook all the way through. See now we've got that nice opening. And I'm going to put these in the salt water. And I'm going to put them in the fridge. You want to leave them at least an hour. And if you can leave them longer than that, that's great. So, in the fridge we go. Okay, now we're going to turn our attention to the stuffing. And this stuffing is just a little bit different um, than what you would make for say a turkey. Um, I, I've started here and I have just turned the heat on. This is about a quarter cup, about two slices, two or three slices of bulk sausage. You can use any kind of sausage you like. This is just regular sage sausage. And I'm going to crumble it up pretty tiny as it cooks. I have here a pint jar of freshly made chicken broth and look on top and you'll see this is this has not been canned we just made this and on top is a little bit of fat that's smaltz we're going to put that smaltz in there for the flavor because that's not very um, fat yeah. sausage one chopped up apple, about two slices of pineapple chopped up, that's a half a cup of cubed bread, and you know I buy that, I don't make it from scratch, even though you probably make it from scratch, but we don't eat bread very often, and so it's not economical for me to make my own, so I just buy um, the croutons already made. That's the other half of our lime. That's some of my dried rosemary from my garden. We have salt and red pepper flakes. And I will add about two tablespoons full of uh, brown sugar. I will use artificial brown sugar, and you probably won't. But uh, that's our ingredients for the stuffing. Okay, I'm going to let this sausage brown in my cast iron skillet and I want to make the pieces 
as small as I can because remember we're going to suck this in the pork chop. Okay, that spread out pretty well. Now you see that layer of fat on the top? That's schmaltz. And I'm going to use that as added fat here. It carries a lot of flavor. And we have fresh chicken broth pretty often. I also have chicken broth canned. And when you can it, you have to skim the fat. So if you skim that fat off, and you'll kind of see the chicken in there. If you um, skim that fat off and refrigerate it or freeze it, it's great to add flavor to so many things. And it's called schmaltz. Okay, may still need to add just a little bit more fat. That may not be enough. There goes my apple. goes my pineapple. And you know, you could do that with orange sections too. I have done it many times with orange instead of pineapple. add just a pinch of salt. And I'm going to add just a pinch of pepper. And I'm using red pepper. You can use black pepper. more than just a pinch, about a quarter teaspoonful, I would say, of rosemary. This is a very light stuffing. And then I'm going to add about a quarter cup um, of this chicken broth. Sorry, maybe closer to half a cup. I said that wrong. Half a cup of chicken broth. The apples get tender and chopping them a little finer because I don't want them mush but I want them small now I'm gonna let that simmer for three or four minutes to make sure that um, 
it's hot all the way through and the apples are cooked and I'll be back. Okay, I have a little noise going on now. I have to speak a little louder. To the breadcrumbs. Now, I can't give you an exact amount on the breadcrumbs. I'm going to stir them in to soak up any extra juice. And I may actually add a little more chicken broth because we do want enough breadcrumbs to make it stuffing. And I, I've cooked out most of it. So I started out with about a half a cup. Okay, I have not that much left. That was almost a half a cup. I'm going to put a lid on this, turn it off, let it cool a little bit so I can handle it to stuff the pork chops and then I'll be back. Oops, of course, I forgot something. I'm going to squeeze some more of this lime juice in. This was the other half of the lime. Now I'm going to cover it back, and we'll come back to you in a bit. Well, here we have it. These are our marinated pork chops. I'm going to dry them off a little bit. And dry my cutting board. and take the lid off my stuffing. It's still kind of warm, but I have on gloves, so I should be able to handle it. And I'm gonna stir in, that's two tablespoons full of brown sugar substitute, and you can use real brown sugar if you like. And if if pineapple and apple and brown sugar and all of that seems not to fit in your mind with pork chops, mm, think of a ham glaze. Uh, or think of smoking pork in applewood. Pork lends itself to fruit, uh, especially apples. I love apples with pork. Okay. So, let me see if I can find this nice hole that I cut. You'll see. And I'm going to put half in there. And there's a little spot. I don't know. I guess it's okay. I started to say there's a little spot that needs to be cut a little more. Now, a little of this is probably going to fall out as it's cooking, but you get less falling out cut this way than you would if you had cut the other side. And I actually think most people cook, cut the other side. Uh, you can also stick them together with toothpicks if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary. Ooh, it's kind of juicy. I might cut that one just a little bit more. Uh, 
Uh, I guess I need to start with a spoon. Now I have a skillet heating with about a quarter cup of oil. We're going to dredge these with flour and then we're going to brown them in some oil. Then we're going to finish them off in the oven. I have to tell you, this stuffing smells wonderful. And I did make a little bit too much, so that recipe would work for three. Now this is self-rising flour. I'm not putting out anything else in it. If you're using plain flour, you need to add the equivalent of a teaspoonful of salt, half a teaspoonful of salt per cup. This won't take nearly a cup. And I'm not breading it as heavily and thickly as if I were making say fried chicken or breaded pork chops. We're just dredging it a little bit to help dry the surface. Now remember I didn't salt this again. It's been brined so it should be good and tender. So here we go. I've got my pan heating and I'm going to put these in at a medium heat and brown them on both sides before we finish them off in the oven. We'll be right back. Okay, I've turned my oven on to preheat uh, to about 325. And let's check this oil and see if it's hot enough. I dropped in a crumb, we get a sizzle, it's hot enough. I had to switch to a bigger pan because uh, these are some big old pork chops. And we may get a little sp spilling out. And that's okay because we're going to finish these with a braise. We're going to let them brown on one side, turn them, and let them brown on the other. I'll be back in just a few. Okay. Just as with all frying and cast iron, you want to nudge it to make sure it has let go, and it has. And turn this pretty carefully. I'm going to put a lid on it, let the other side brown, I'll be right back. I believe these are done enough. They're going to finish off in the oven. You take it out, because I need to drain off some of this oil before I put them in the oven. And you see these lovely big pork chops. This is the reason I beat them down a little bit. They would have never gotten done. And 
to pour off this oil, saving any little bits that might have come uh, loose. The fond, little crinkly bits in the bottom. Put our pork chunks back. I'm sorry, I just tasted it, the little bit that came out, it was wonderful. This is chicken broth. I don't want to cover them. I want to come up halfway up. It's freshly made chicken broth. I have my oven heated to 325. This is going back in the oven uh, for about 30 minutes and then we'll check it. I'll be back. Mmm, out of the oven. Still bubbling. Looks wonderful. I'm gonna plate this up and then we'll have dinner. There you have it. This is a stuffed pork chop. Dre stuffed, dredged, browned, and then braised in the oven uh, in fresh chicken broth. I'm gonna cut into this and let you see what we've got. Okie dokie. Now remember this was a very light, fruity stuffing. And you see that pork chop is done all the way through and very juicy. On this side we've got the stuffing and I'm going to just slice down through here and get a little bite of the stuffing and the pork and it's very hot I think you can probably see the steam but I think I'm gonna brave it anyway I actually think I could cut that with this fork. Yep, I could cut this with that fork. And I may just eat here while you're waiting. I'm going to serve this with some potatoes O'Brien. You hear my Bobby down there. He wants some. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. See you again tomorrow. Mm, no leftovers tonight.